any sense of surprise at all at what appears to be the scale of the victory? Well, I'm surprised that some people are surprised. I think the surveys were very, very clear that this is barely a two-way race. It's perhaps a one-and-a-half-way race. Uh, you know, the opposition leader, uh, Vice President Leonor uh, uh, Robredo, was not against Ferdinand Marcus Jr. alone. She was against Ferdinand Marcus Jr. in tandem with President Shell daughter, Sara Duterte. It was a formidable so-called unity tandem. And if you look at Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s numbers, it's almost identical with the numbers that uh, Sara Duterte is winning in the vice presidential race. Uh, I would say up to 60%, perhaps, of around 50% of the votes that Obama Marcos is expected to get, at least based on partial and unofficial tally, that's going to come from Sara Duterte. And in fact, if Sara Duterte had decided to stay in the race, she was leading all pre-election surveys last year, uh, then I think Bomo Marcos, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. would perhaps have had to consider political retirement altogether. So these contingencies are something very important to keep in mind, as much as we should recognize that the Marcoses have been carefully and systematically working their way back, clawing their way back to the presidential palace over the past 30 years through all means necessary. So Richard, what do voters now expect Bong Bong Marcos to deliver? Well, Bombo Marcus has deliberately avoided any detailed policy discussion. I think he's the only top presidential candidate in recent memory, if ever, who has essentially shunned any kind of really you know, legitimate political debate, including debates organized by the Commission on Elections. You know, the rallying cry of the Bombo Marcus campaign is unity, which could mean anything to anyone. But in this case, it helped him because it made him look like someone who is above the fray. And in many ways, actually, Fernand Marcus Jr. has had the cake and eaten it too. I mean, on one hand, he has the name of his father, the strongman image. At the same time, he projects himself almost like a K-pop star. If you look at his TikTok channels, his vlogs on YouTube. Also, uh, the combination of two proved very formidable in this race. Nonetheless, Fernand Marcus Jr., he's winning big. He's the first majority president in recent memory. So he has a lot of dem uh, democratic mandate. But... The opposition, they may have lost, but they're bitter, they're angry, they they hate the Marcoses. So he has to make sure that he doesn't provoke another people power or another massive protest. But more importantly, Richard, he has to come up with a clear package of economic recovery after two years of troubles during the pandemic. Sure. And how do you think he'll deal with any opposition to his administration? And do you think that there's any concerns or should be about freedom of pre the press? Right. I mean, let's not forget. Ferdinand Marcus Jr. is the incoming president, at least based on the numbers we have, after Rodrigo Duterte, the outgoing president. And Rodrigo Duterte, over the past six years, has undermined the foundations of the Philippines' liberal democracy, right and left with impunity. He's still very popular. So I think Ferdinand Marcus Jr. will be in a very good position to pick up where Duterte left off. Mm. And one of the things that he could focus on in the coming years is constitutional change altogether. And when you talk about constitutional change, it could go wrong in so many ways. We have seen in Turkey, in Venezuela, uh, in many countries around the world, whereby constitutional change was essentially a backdoor to defanging institutional checks and balances and entrenching a specific person, family, or coalition into power. So I think there's a very serious risk that the Philippines transitions into becoming what political scientists call hybrid regimes, similar to Malaysia or Turkey, whereby you have elections, but you know there's a dominant coalition that keep on winning the elections. So very limited room for maneuver for the opposition. That is a serious risk for the Philippines down the road. And, and certain times ahead by the sounds of it. Richard, thank you so much for joining us.